For those of us who study Christianity and Islam regularly, people like Zakir Naik are fascinating because they have to know that what they're saying is false, and yet they say it anyway. This makes us wonder, if truth isn't the goal, what is? Zakir Naik's followers genuinely believe that what he's saying is true, but Naik can't possibly believe that what he's saying is true. For instance, Nike tells his gullible followers that, according to the Bible, Jesus survived crucifixion. But Nike knows that the Bible repeatedly declares that Jesus died by crucifixion, and he knows that Jesus himself repeatedly said that he would be killed. In Mark 9.31, Jesus, who referred to himself as the Son of Man, said to his followers, The Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he has been killed, he will rise three days later. The Gospels say things like this over and over and over like a beating drum. What does Nike tell his listeners? He tells them that, according to the Bible, Jesus never died. Here Nike's fans will say, oh, but the sign of Jonah. This is another perfect example of Nike telling his followers something that he knows is false. Nike tells his listeners that the sign of Jonah was that Jesus wouldn't die. Jesus mentions the sign of Jonah in Matthew 16, 4. Later, in the very same chapter, we read this. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. Notice Jesus tells his disciples that he's going to be killed. Peter, like Zachar Nike, says, No, this will never happen to you. And Jesus calls him Satan for saying that he wouldn't die. Does Zachar Nike know that right after Jesus mentions the sign of Jonah, he declares that rejecting his death on the cross is satanic? Does Nike know that? Of course he does. And yet he tells his gullible followers that the sign of Jonah was that Jesus wouldn't die. Zachar Nike tells his followers that when Jesus refers to the comforter or helper in John 14, 16, he's referring to Muhammad. Yet, just 10 verses later, in John 14, 26, Jesus identifies the Comforter, the Helper, as the Holy Spirit. Why does Zachar Naik lie to his followers? He knows he's lying. He knows what the Bible says. Again, if truth isn't the goal, what is? Well, we may have our answer. The BBC reports. Indian prosecutors have charged controversial Islamic preacher Zakir Naik with money laundering. Mr. Naik, who lives in exile, is accused of acquiring $28 million worth of criminal assets, a claim he denies. Indian authorities have also accused him of spreading hate speech and inciting terrorism. Mr. Naik, 53, promotes a radical form of Islam on the channel Peace TV. It is banned in India, but has an estimated 200 million viewers worldwide. Broadcasting from Dubai, Peace TV is owned by the Islamic Research Foundation, a group headed by Mr. Naik. Other countries have banned the channel, including Bangladesh, where it is accused of inspiring one of the gunmen behind a 2016 cafe attack in Dhaka, in which 22 people were killed. $28 million in criminal assets. Money laundering. If you've watched Breaking Bad, you understand the purpose of money laundering. If you get a lot of money through criminal activities, drugs, prostitution, aka muta, etc., it's difficult to spend the money because the government starts asking where you're getting all that money from when you don't make nearly that much at your job. So you need some sort of legitimate business to take that money and make it seem like it was obtained legally. Guess what? Zakir Naik's Dawa campaigns are perfect for this. They can dump a million dollars in Taliban drug money into the Islamic Research Foundation's bank account, and when the government says, 
where did you get that million dollars in cash, they can say, we got it in donations. We passed some buckets around at Zuckernike's last speech, and people generously donated a million dollars in cash. Then you use the money to buy property or whatever else you want. I'm not saying that's where the money came from. The article doesn't go into specifics. But Nike's events are absolutely perfect for money laundering, wherever the money is coming from. India's Enforcement Directorate, which investigates financial crimes, filed the charges against Mr. Nike in a court in Mumbai on Thursday. It told the court that it had identified assets worth millions of dollars as proceeds of crime. Mr. Nike's inflammatory speeches and lectures have inspired and incited a number of Muslim youths in India to commit unlawful activities and terrorist acts, ED told the court. The agency has accused him of using funds from dubious or suspicious sources to buy property in India and finance events where he made provocative speeches. Mr. Nike says the money was obtained legitimately. He obtained that $28 million in criminal assets legitimately, just like Muhammad and his followers obtained all that gold, land, and sex slaves legitimately from the people they robbed and killed. Mr. Nike's fundamentalist approach to religion has long been controversial. Many detained Al-Qaeda followers have reportedly told officials that he was a huge influence on them. He was banned from entering the UK in 2010 for unacceptable behavior, and because of his speeches, by then Home Secretary and now Prime Minister Theresa May. However, it was in July 2016 when he really came to international attention after a deadly attack on the Holy Artisan Cafe in Dhaka. The Bangladeshi media claimed that one of the gunmen had been inspired by his speeches. Later that month, the Bangladeshi government banned Peace TV. In November 2016, India's counterterrorism agency filed an official complaint against Mr. Nike, accusing him of promoting religious hatred and unlawful activity. Mr. Nike moved to Malaysia in 2017. Here's what's amazing. Zakir Nike is Islam's top apologist. This is the go-to guy for hundreds of millions of Muslims. When you go to your Muslim friend and you show him that Muhammad was a greedy, violent criminal, your Muslim friend will say, just go to Zakir Naik, and he'll show you that your claims about Muhammad are false. And what do we find when we go to Zakir Naik for answers? We find a greedy criminal who inspires terrorists and had to flee his home in order to avoid spending the rest of his life in prison. This is the guy who's supposed to show us what Islam really is. Seems like he's doing a bang-up job. Zakir Naik is a perfect example of someone who has dedicated his life to imitating Muhammad. No wonder so many Muslims view him as the ultimate scholar of Islam.